Hello everyone, I am Samutra from Electrical and Electronics Engineering in Panariam Institute of Technology. My teammates are Pratiksha and Tanashri. We are going to present a project in the title of Microwave Oven Simulation, which we have done an internship in our Emitex. First, what is Microwave Oven? And we are going to see what are the modes we are going to use in this project and uh, what are the requirements for this project and what is embedded system which is most important for this project uh, what is microcontroller and microprocessor and uh, PIXIM lab uh, which is a development board we are going to use for this project and CLCD, matrix keypad, ISR, timer and finally we are going to see the demo of the project implementation so first, what is microwave oven? Microwave oven is used to heat or cook the food using microwaves which is or form electromagnetic waves. There are several modes in various microwave ovens. We are going to implement four basic modes such as macro mode, grill mode, convection mode and start mode. Let's see what are the working of these modes and how we are, how we are implementing it. First, what is micro mode? This is a traditional way of cooking mode. The maximum power of 900 watt will be consumed by this mode. In this case, the maximum time that a user can use is up to 60 minutes. Next, the grill mode. Grill mode works as the macro mode, but its purpose is to cook the meat and bread. User can set the time as per the cooking time of meat or as per the requirement. Next, convection mode. In this mode, user can set the oven to preheat for a particular temperature for 3 minutes to preheat the oven. After preheating is done, user is asked to enter the time for their uh, cooking. Next, what are the requirements for this project? Need some knowledge in embedded C and hands-on on embedded C. And uh, we are going to use MPLab IDE to code for this project and use the XC8 compiler to compile this project. PixMLab board consists of many peripherals like a Pix16, F877A, 16 cross post CLCD, tactile switches, matrix keypad, and timer. Mm, and some other peripherals are also used. Let's see in detail. Next, what is embedded system? Embedded system is a combination of any hardware and software which is intended to do a specific task. A general purpose system is used to perform large number of tasks whereas an embedded system is used to perform a specific task. This is the difference between general purpose system and an embedded system. This is the embedded system block diagram where the embedded system consists of sensors, memory unit, control processing unit, hardware unit and attenuators. Next, what are the types of embedded system? Standalone system, real time system, network system and mobile system. Let's see in detail about the systems and examples for each of the systems. First, what is standalone system? Standalone system is of two types, slave system and independent system. What is slave system? These systems are not intelligent even though they are embedded system. The system cannot action by their own. Cannot take action by their own. Example, semi-automatic washing machine. Second is independent system. These systems can take their action by their own. Example, Google car, which is a driverless car. They can drive by their own without any drivers or humans. Next, real-time systems. These systems are time-bound systems which, are, uh, which will take action on a specified time. These are of three types, hard real-time system, firm real-time systems, and soft real-time systems. In hard real-time systems, 
the system should meet the deadline any failure is not acceptable example like such as a like critical applications some real time application is similar to hard real time application but difference in economical properties soft real time systems can have tolerance in meeting its deadline example for this real time systems are airbag system next network systems what is network system the system which are connected to a network like a wifi bluetooth etc are called a network system example home system network home security system next mobile system the embedded system which are movable are called mobile system example robots next this is the components of an embedded system which consists of a software and the microprocessors this is the hardware microcontrollers memory adc dsc and so on let's now let's see how to choose the embedded system the embedded system should consume less power the cost efficiency and processing power should be efficient the system should be reliable and the memory should be used efficiently next what is microcontroller and microprocessor an integrated circuit which is capable of being programmed to perform a specified task it has a design restriction such as a memory size io capabilities peripheral functions etc choose a microcontroller based on applications performance price availability of tools and special capabilities what is the difference between microcontroller and microprocessor let's see microcontroller in microcontroller all components will be in a single chip the flexibility is less complexity is also less in microprocessor all components are assembled separately flexibility is more but the design complexity is more let's get into the project peripherals first pixim lab architecture pixim lab has a microcontroller pix 16 f877a we are going to use the buzzer and the matrix keeper clcd and um, some other peripherals also used these are the main peripherals in pixim lab then syncing and sourcing circuit what is syncing circuit and what is sourcing circuit in the sourcing circuit the microcontroller acts as an output to for the at the microcontroller point of view the microcontroller acting as input to the load but it is acting as an output for the microcontroller it is giving the current is flowing from the microcontroller to the load this is called a sourcing circuit in which the microcontroller acts as a source to the load likewise in this syncing circuit the microcontroller act as a load which consumes power from the 5 volt source so this is syncing circuit next clcd what is clcd clcd is a character liquid crystal display which is uh, used in this project in pixim lab there are two types of display one is a 16 cross 2 display and 16 cross 4 display we are going to use 16 cross 4 display in this project this displays the ascii characters and some special characters it is most commonly used to display there are two types of communication modes 4 bit mode and 8 bit mode here we are going to use 4 bit mode next tactile switch this is how the tactile switch looks and uh, this is pull down resistor circuit and pull up resistor circuit in pull down resistor circuit if the switch is open then the controller will read a zero as uh, the resistor is grounded the, when the switch is open the controller is connected to the resistor if the switch is closed 
the controller will read one as the switch as the control will be connected to vdd as the switch is closed in this pull up resistor circuit when switch is open the controller will be connected to vdd and it will read one as then if the switch is closed the controller will read zero as the switch is connected to the controller when it is closed next what is the tactile switch tactile switch is a switch whose operation is perceptible by touch the switch is select use it to select the mode of operation and to enter the time and temperature in our project this switch will produce bouncing effect when when we press the switch mkp matrix keypad this is a keypad in which number of tactile switches are connected in a row and column manner this is used when more number of user inputs are required and still want to save some controller input output lines that is io lines this keypads are most commonly used in telephone digital keypads digital lockers the calculators etc this is how the uh, tactile kits are connected in our pixim lab software next interrupts uh, what is interrupt an interrupt is a communication process set up in a microprocessor or a microcontroller in which an internal or external device requests the microprocessing unit or microcontrolling unit to stop the processing then the microprocessing unit or microcontrolling unit acknowledges the request and attends the request and go back to the processing where it was got interrupted next what is pooling it is the process where the computer or controlling device waits for an external device to check the readiness or state often often with a low level hardware next what are the disadvantages of pooling method Uh, loss of events may occur when we use the polling method response will be poor power management will be less what are the classification of interrupts interrupts are classified into hardware and software interrupts further hardware interrupts are classified into non maskable interrupts and maskable interrupts these maskable hardware interrupts are further classified into external and internal next isr what is isr isr is an interrupt service routine and isr is a software that hardware invokes in response to an internet interrupt isr attends to the request of an interrupting source by clearing the interrupt flag and should save register contents that may be affected by the code in isr it must be terminated with the instruction return instruction enable flag when an interrupt occurs the microprocessing unit completes the instruction being executed then it disables global interrupt enable places the address from the program counter on the stack and return from interrupt next timer timer is an important application in any mobile system and default peripheral in a microcontroller which maintains the time thing of an operation in a sync with the system time or an external time it has many applications such as measuring time and uh, generating delays etc timers or counters as a software designed to count the time intervals between the events there are uh, four main uh, terminologies in timers let's see one by one first is resolution it is also called register width which is the width of a register it may be 8 bit or 16 bit tick tick is referred as a change from one number to the other another number while counting it may be up count or down count quantum which depends on the system clock is a measure of time which is responsible for the tick next is the scaling scaling may be pre scaled or post scaled which is used to set the time as per our requirement modes of timers may be 
counter, pulse width modulation or pulse generator etc. Let's get into the project demo. Let me open a File is loader and it's showing the four different modes of cooking that is macro mode, grill mode, convection mode and start mode. When I click uh, when I click one for, to select a macro mode, it displays the screen uh, user to enter the time required to cook the food. And after uh, uh, clicking the enter that is hash the cooler will start to run after completing the time the cooler will be turned off and the buzzer will be turned on to indicate us the time is cooking time is up let's see how it works let me click uh, first a macro mode it shows that the maximum power it consumes is 900 watt it asks me to enter the time let me enter a uh, five second for our uh, Convenient. Let me enter hash. It shows the five seconds. The cooler started running. After finishing, the buzzer will be turned on. I think you have heard that buzzer sound. Let me click a second uh, cooking mode which is a grill mode, it works as the macro mode but its purpose is to cook meat or bread. Let me click a second grill. It is also asking me to enter the time. That is, I will enter same 5 seconds are convenient. Enter hash. See the time has started and the cooler is also started. The buzzer will be turned off when cooking time is up. Next is the convection mode. When I click the third, that is convection mode, it asks the user to enter the temperature for which the oven should be preheated for 3 minutes. Let me click uh, 3. It shows, it asks us to enter the temperature. Let me click 123 degrees Celsius and uh, Entered. See, the timer started with 180 seconds, that is 3 minutes. When the preheating is done, the buzzer will be turned on and it indicates that a preheating is done. Then the screen, uh, set time screen will be displayed where we, we should set the time to cook the food. Uh, meanwhile, I'll explain this. I told that uh, Pixin Lab has two types of uh, CLCD that is 16 cross 2 and 16 cross 4 we are using 16 cross 4 these are the tactile switches which are connected in row and column manner which constitute a matrix keeper these are the LEDs this is the microcontroller and uh, in this case uh, we will see uh, how the starter resume work pass when, I, when we click how it works and uh, when we click or stop how will it how it will work let's see them let's wait for a few more seconds
and this is the rb3 switch which we are using to open the door when i open the door the clcd will display that the door is open please close the door and the buzzer will be indicated the buzzer will be turned on and indicates that the door is open please op close the door and i will show that how it works Preheating is going to be done. See the CLCD is displaying and asking us to enter the time to cook the food. Let me enter 20 seconds to show how other options work. Let me enter. And uh, you can increase the time by pressing start. Uh, that is a 4 key. And uh, you can pass by pressing 5. See, I have pressed the 5. The motor, the cooler is top. <coughs> when I press 4, it, uh, it will get resume. And now it will not get increased by 30 seconds. It will start, it will resume where it got stopped. Let us see that. I am entering 4. See, it is not incrementing by 30 seconds and you can stop by pressing 6 and uh, when I press RB3 the door will be opened and uh, the buzzer will be turned on and CLCD displays that a uh, uh, door is open please close the door let us check that See, I will open the door I hope you have heard that uh, buzzer sound and uh, it is screen displayed you can stop by pressing 6 See, the cooking mode screen is visible you can uh, use the fourth option start mode to cook uh, to heat any food or uh, to cook simple foods when i click for 4 it uh, automatically starts with 30 seconds you can increase the time by clicking again clicking 4 let us see I will click uh, 4 see it has started from 30 seconds you can increase the time by clicking again 4 see the time is incremented and you can pass by pressing 5 see all are stopped let me resume by pressing 4 now the time is not incremented when I press the switch pull. When the time is completed, the cooler will be off and the buzzer will be turned on indicating that the cooking time is up. Let's see. This is all about our project. This internship is very useful for me to learn many things like uh, embedded C, about a uh, microcontroller usage and uh, how to use it in uh, real-time applications, etc.
let us wait for put 10 more seconds hope you have uh, seen the screen that cooking time is up and you have heard the buzzer sound. This is all about our project. Thank you for listening. Thank you.